Ah, it finally happened. My most viewed video is no longer the feature-length, super-deep, well-researched theory that I poured my heart and soul and weeks of time into. Now it's the one that says sex in huge letters. So, to celebrate, we're going to look at all of the sex differences in Pokémon that were cut. That's right. Not too long ago, a beta of Pokémon Diamond and Pearl leaked onto the internet, and among many other things that would be changed originally, it turns out there were a lot more Pokémon with differences based on them being male or female. This is nothing unheard of. Sexual dimorphism is incredibly common. That's the term for it. Sexual dimorphism. When males and females of the same species look different. And it being such a massive part of biology, of course Pokémon reference it. Dawn fan males have bigger tusks just like elephants. Pyroar! I mean, it's a lion, a perfect example of sexual dimorphism. And then there's Bidoof. Bidoof females don't have as many tail puffs to get in the way while being mounted. There are several reasons why these Pokémon have the differences that they do, and that's exactly what this old two-part series that we did covers. So check out those videos here for more information about the Pokémon differences that were kept. But now in this video, we're going to look at all of the unused examples of sexual dimorphism that they were considering adding in Generation 4 but ultimately cut out or changed them. I'll explain a supposed reason as for why the difference is the way that it is, and then at the end explain why they cut most of these. Alrighty then, so let's get going right after the intro. So, the easiest and most obvious example has to do with weapons. In nature, many species will have the males get an extra something to fight predators, but mainly and more so to fight other males of the same species over access to mate with the females. These weapons could be tusks, antlers, horns, etc. And in Pokémon, many of the Pokémon that kept their sexual dimorphism have this as the explanation. Male Rhydon, Sea King, and Mamoswine all have larger horns and tusks than the females. But as it turns out, in this beta, there were a lot more Pokémon that had these differences in their horns, like Rapidash, Onix, Weedle, Lapras, Seal and Dugong, Amastar, Houndoom, Skarmory, Absol, Glalie, and even Dragonite and Agron's whole lines had these differences. From the front, I think I actually prefer the look of the female Absol. The horn thing is more balanced with the white, yin-yang and all that. Ninjask also has bigger horns on the male, and we can see that this is the case with a large number of insects, but not really cicadas. But in the case of its Prevo, male Ninkata just has bigger wings, possibly reflecting how male cicadas use their wings more than the females. They make that loud, loud, terrible sound. Shelter and Cloister males have bigger spikes too, but like with Ninjask, it doesn't exactly reflect the reality of clams and oysters. It's just more general, males have bigger weapons as the explanation, rather than the thing that they are actually based on having that be the case, which is likely why a lot of these were cut. They made these changes sort of based on the generic overall idea of the males having bigger weapons, rather than it being connected to a species where it is the reality. But then, some of the unused ones were on Pokémon based on species where the differences are real. Like Pinsir. Literally all stag beetles and stag beetle relatives show the males having significantly larger weapons, or even just having them, whereas the females don't have them at all. And then Krabby and Kingler. There are a few species of crab, such as the Fiddler Crab, that are famous for the males having a single massive claw. Corfish and Crawdont originally had this difference too. In fact, a number of Pokémon in this beta showed the males having larger claws. Paris, Parasect, Seviper, if you can call that a claw, Anorith, and look at Armaldo! Male Armaldo had a WICKED claw originally! Sandslash also had the male have a bigger set of claws, and interestingly, male Sandshrew had a bigger tail. Not really a bigger weapon. I guess it's just to show that the males were overall bigger, which is also the case for many species. Another interesting example is with the Ralts line. Ralts and Gardevoir's horns are bigger on the males, and yes, they are horns, video about what those are here, but interestingly, male and female Curlia have the same horns, but the difference this time is that the hair is longer on the female, referencing a category that we will go over later, where the differences are to make the female appear more feminine. But let's stick to the weapons category for now. There's only a few left. Male and female Stantler both have antlers. There are a number of ungulates where this is the case, but here, the male Stantlers have these extra branches on their antlers, making them more effective for battling. Male Crobat originally had bigger fangs than the female, and interestingly, this is still the case with Zubat and Golbat, as in those two got to keep their difference. 
but they removed it with Crobat. Odd. Maybe just because it looked kind of stupid. Male quillfish had bigger spikes, which isn't shown in reality, likely why it was cut. Male Remoraid had a bigger horn, and Remoras don't even have horns, so it was cut. And funnily enough, Wismer, Loudred, and Exploud males originally had larger ears, speakers, and organ pipes, which I guess are weapons to them. And I feel like this difference was cut because it made the females look kind of dumb. Like, it's, just, it's so tiny on Loudred. What? It, it looks bad. But saving the best for last, I think, huh. I think the most hilarious example of the male having bigger or more horns has to be with Charmeleon and Charizard. On Charmeleon, it's okay. A smaller horn on the female. You know, same as usual. But then... Then... <laughs> no! Just no! No, you cannot! Ah! Why? <clears throat> All right, the female gets one horn and the male gets two. What is, what is this supposed to be? Like, okay, most lizards with horns, everybody has horns, but some like the Jackson's chameleon, only the males have horns, as in at all. Okay, but, but that doesn't mean, <laughs> that doesn't mean you just, I, I can't take it seriously. That doesn't mean you just plop one horn in the middle of the female's head! Ah! But speaking of the chameleon, Kecleon males originally had way crazier head crests. Ultimately, they went with the female design for both, which is noteworthy. As you'll notice throughout this video, most of the time when they would cut the differences, they went with the male design for both of them. Usually because the males were more aggressive looking, bigger weapons. And this is a game about battling, after all. But speaking of bigger crest spike things, that's basically our next category. Pokemon who, in the beta, originally had the males have bigger crests, or frills, or hair, or whatever. In meat space, this is easy to see with many species of birds. Compare a rooster to a hen, for instance. Many birds of paradise males go crazy with this, and it's all to compete in dancing competitions, showing themselves off to females to potentially mate with, or even just for males to sort of size each other up with something more obvious. This is the case with Spiro and Firo originally, I'm sure. Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot. Hoot Hoot and Noctowl males originally had bigger eyebrow feathers too. Golduck and Altaria have these also. And I think Delibird has the best excuse for it. It's a Santa bird. Santa's a dude with a huge beard. So I guess it makes sense for the females to not have as much fluff, but ultimately that too was cut. But speaking of beards, Wall rain. Originally, the males had much poofier beard mane things. But interestingly enough, the males and females had the same size tusks. If anything would be different between them, it should have been that, as it reflects real walruses. The males' tusks can get huge! But perhaps this confusion is why the change got cut. Its Prevo, Celio, also had a change cut. The males originally had bigger whiskers. Same with Barboach, Wishcash, Meowth, and Persian bigger whiskers on the males, likely to both make them appear bigger overall, and perhaps because dudes can grow mustaches. Interestingly, quite a few of the differences that they did keep in the final game feature the same idea. Rattata, Alakazam, Swalot, the males all have bigger whiskers. So I wonder why these ones got cut. But some other examples of differences in crest sizes in the real world bring us to reptiles. Plenty of male reptiles are larger overall, but also have proportionally larger crests. And in the beta, this was originally reflected by Wartortle, Grovile, Septile, Larvitar, Pupitar, Tyranitar, Mudkip, Marshtomp, Swampert, Totodile, Croconaw, Feraligator, Bagon, and Salamence. And I know Mudkip's line are amphibians, but it's close enough for our purpose today. Same goes for Machop, Machoke, and Machamp. And come to think of it, are they reptile people? They have no fur, and they have these hard crests, which were originally bigger on the males. So maybe. Also, hang on, hang on one second. Let's, let's go back to female Mudkip real quick. What? Why? How did they think this was okay? No wonder a lot of these got cut. Another reptile is Lickitung, though instead of a bigger crested male, it just has a fatter tail. Plenty of species of lizards store fat in their tail, and males are bigger, so that would mean it stores more fat because it's bigger. Now, when it comes to male versus female dragonflies, uh, they have differences, which was originally reflected in Yanma properly, being different colors. I don't know why they cut that one. But as for the other dragonfly Pokemon, Vibrava, the males have larger antennae, which 
No, it's good that they cut that one. And don't even get me started on how STUPID female Flygon looks. Ah! All right, maybe I'm being too harsh, but either way, I'm glad that they just went with the male design here. Time for a plant tangent. A plangent. Plants aren't really male or female for the most part. They have parts for each. So it would make sense for there not to be too much of a difference between literal plant Pokemon. Like Grovile and Venusaur are animals crossed with plants, so they, they can have differences, no problem. But Executor, originally the males had bigger fronds, so that got cut for a good reason. The entire Bellsprout line had bigger leaves on the males too. Oddish also. Though Gloom and Vileplume's differences were kept, just different spot patterns. Chikorita and Bayleaf are plant animals, so they would have been fine, but ultimately the bigger leaved males just became the default. But Meganium's difference did stay, likely because it's perfect. Its antenna resemble stamen, the male part of the flower, so the males having bigger ones is perfect. Now for some final, quick examples of the males originally just having a bigger part. Here we can see Togetic's wings, Corsola's coral, which makes no sense, Mantine's antenna, which manta rays don't even have. Carvana and Sharpedo's bigger fins. Feebas, Huntail, and Gorbis males all had bigger frills. Horsey, Seedra, and Kingdra males had bigger fins. Venonat's antennas were bigger on the male. Venomoth just had a different head shape, it was a little bit bigger on the male. Electabuzz and Ninetales had bigger hair. Growlithe and Arcanine's fluff was fluffy, whereas the females was nice and brushed down. Electric and Minetric have a spiky hip fluff that's bigger on the males. Zigzagoon's tail is bigger on the male, as is Linoon's face stripe. And Surskit and Masquerade's hair horn thing is longer on the male, and there's also Delcaddy's ears. But speaking of ears, a lot of Pokemon in this beta had ears be the main difference between the males and the females. I guess smaller ears equals cuter equals more feminine? I don't know. But I'm glad they cut these, because each of the female evolutions look ridiculous! There's no scientific reason for it either. Felines, canines, foxes, whatever they are, none of them show females with ears that are half of the size. It's ridiculous. Why did they think this was a good idea? Apparently, they didn't because it got cut, but at, at some point, someone thought it was a good idea. They applied the same logic to plenty of other popular cute Pokemon too, like Plussel, Minin, Jigglypuff, Wigglytuff, Mr. Mime, Granbull, Zangoose, Mankey, Primate. All right, maybe they aren't all popular cute Pokemon, but you can tell that this was a thing the designers were thinking of originally. Let's just give the girls girlier little ears. It'll be cute. And ultimately it was cut, thank goodness. I mean, they thought it was such a good idea at some point that they even did it to Raichu and even Pikachu. Forget the heart tail. Let's make the ears point downwards too. I mean, I, I guess, okay, it, it's a little cute on Raichu. I'll give it that, but I, I can't take female Pikachu seriously. Imagine the somewhat animated 3D models that we have today and think about how much less expressive the female Pikachus would be if they had decided to keep this. Glad it's gone. But Pikachu brings us to our next category, making the females more feminine. You know how female Wobbuffet has lipstick? Well, originally it had lipstick and long hair, or at least a blob that resembles hair. It looks even more like Jessie now. But Psyduck, I actually really like beta female Psyduck. I think it's really cute. The little feather tuft on the top of its head, it's shaped like a heart. Shame that this one was cut. But I'm really glad that they cut the difference found on the head of female Slacking. So Slacking's head is supposed to resemble that of a lazy balding man. So how do you make the female more feminine? Well, you give it a bow. I'm serious. It's like a classic Disney cartoon. Can't tell if the duck is a boy or a girl? Well, give it a bow! It's a girl now! Smeargle originally was more subtle, at least. The female has longer, droopier ears, which resembles long hair coming down from the hat. That would have been passable, but it didn't make the cut either. But at least they didn't just have them paint different colors, you know, like blue and pink or whatever. But other beta Pokemon did have color differences being their thing. Like Chimeko, the males had yellow tails. What's up with that? Well, they are based on your classical Japanese wind chime, which realistically can be any color. So perhaps they just wanted to add some variety, make the males more like the current shiny color. But that's not a good enough reason, so this change was cut. Just like the differences once found on Bellossum, where the males had leaves of a slightly different shade on the bottom. Lame. Beedrill at least was interesting. The males had a black thorax. This is actually more accurate to real hornets and wasps, but 
It doesn't have anything to do with them being male or female. That's more noticeable due to their size, not color. The females being a bit longer, or just a bit bigger overall. So that was cut. But speaking of bigger females, while it's not as common, there are a number of species where this is the case, especially in bugs. And some Pokemon reflect this, like female Scizor having a bigger abdomen. But in this beta, we learned that there was a plan for Spinarak and Ariados originally to have bigger females too. Spiders are the perfect example of females being bigger, because in most species of spider, it's super drastic. So I have no idea why this one was cut, it would have been perfect. Female Tropius had bigger bananas originally, which may just be a reference to bearing fruit, being fertile, and such. Shroomish and Breloom females were bigger originally too, which is odd. The terms male and female don't apply to fungus, it's just not how they reproduce. And even with the dinosaurs that Breloom pulls inspiration from, all of the evidence we have points towards the males being bigger and more colorful. So as much as I hate to say it, I think the only reason that this was an idea they had is because these parts of the Pokemon are frilly. It's like a frilly, girly dress mushroom. So they made them bigger on the females? Lame. But not as lame as the fact that they cut the difference that Mightyena had! It's so perfect! Hyenas are one of the rare examples of mammals where the females are not only bigger, but also more aggressive and dominant. And to show that, they had female Mightyena originally have more spiky, messed up fur. Sort of the opposite of Arcanine, Ninetales, and Pidgeotto. It's so good, but it got cut! Oof! Spoink and Grumpig originally had the females carry larger pearls, which could simply be because pearls are jewelry and women like jewelry, or because they're psychic orbs. It could reference how, throughout history, women were more often associated with the occult, both as witches and also as psychics and fortune tellers. But that wouldn't explain why female Mareep, Flaffy, and Ampharos all had bigger tail balls originally. They are not psychic creatures, they are electric type. These orbs glow, they are essentially light bulbs. Male sheep are like most mammals, bigger than their female counterparts. The Chinese dragon elements in Ampharos wouldn't do this either, as they were almost entirely masculine. This difference feels really arbitrarily done. I honestly have no idea. So here's the best BS I could come up with. Ampharos is a lighthouse, right? Well, ship captains tend to refer to inanimate things as her and she. Aye, she's a good ship. Do you see the lighthouse, Captain? Aye, there she is! And thus, lighthouses are female, and thus, female Ampharos is the one with the stronger light bulb tail. Yeah, it's stupid. No wonder this one got cut. But this next one is also stupid, so that'll be fun. Jin Chao and Lantern also have glowing bobbers, and in the beta, the males had bigger ones. Likely, again, just because usually males are bigger, except, oh wait, anglerfish have extreme sexual dimorphism. The females are like 60 times bigger than the males. And most of the males don't even glow. They exist wholly to be spunk delivery boys. So they really got this one wrong. So it was cut. But speaking of spunk, male coughing originally had balls. Like, really? What else would you call this extra big lump on its underside? When he evolves into wheezing, though, his third ball just gets bigger. It's a lot bigger. Because, I mean, males are bigger. I'm glad this one was cut, too. Slow King females had the horns flipped around. Makes the female appear less aggressive, I suppose. And may reflect how some queen crowns weren't as big as king crowns. And queens tended to have earrings that go down, whereas king crowns were more aggressive and upright. Spiky, even. But slow poke females having more white on the tail? That feels completely arbitrary. Like a lot of these. Trico's tails are flipped on the female. Is this to help with breeding? Do female geckos have their tails on all upside down? What use does a female mawile have with the hair being yellow on the tip? Is it because women color their hair more often? No? That's stupid? Then why did you put this in the game originally, Game Freak? Female Meryl have bigger buoyant bouncy bits? I guess that is more womanly. But now, why the heck do the feelers on the female Lilip and Craydilly look more like weenies than the males do? Oh, because some species of sea lily and feather stars have similar differences in coloration based on their sex. Good to know. Doesn't make me sad that they cut it though. Good riddance to most of these, honestly. Most of them are completely needless and arbitrary. Or just make the females look worse. Only a handful of these would have been good to keep, since they actually had good reasons behind them, such as Mightyena, Kingler, or Pinsir. But I think ultimately it was a good move to not do this. Every little change that they do means more and more work for Game Freak in the future. It means a lot of these Pokemon would need an extra model in the game for a relatively minor difference that most people might not even notice. Like a 
tiny extra bit of fluff or a marginally larger claw, which I believe is also why as time goes on through the generations, you'll find fewer and fewer new Pokemon with sexual dimorphism. Indeedee is the only big example we recently got. Gen 7 didn't have any, and Gen 6 only had Pyroar and Meowstic. So I feel like back in Gen 4, they had this big idea to do a load of more examples of sexual dimorphism in Pokemon, but then some of the higher ups were worried about future proofing, so they told the developers to reel it back, cut most of these minor differences that you've got, only do the ones that make the most sense, and please, for the love of God, don't ruin Pikachu or Charizard. Maybe that was the case, but what do you think? Have any better explanations for the ones that I kind of glanced over? Let me know down below. And also, huge thanks to Dr. Lava for documenting and saving all of these sprites. Check out his website with the link in the description. And until next time, never stop using your noggin.